Well, we're here tonight because we want to share information with you about where we are in the US 60 widening project. But really the most important reason why we're here is because we need your input. We've reached a stage in the project where we need to make some decisions in order for the project to move forward. And the questionnaire that you've been provided in the handout is really one way that you can help us make some of these decisions. I'm going to talk about in a few minutes some of the specific questions we're asking on that questionnaire and what we mean by those questions because some of those issues are really important to what the roadway is going to look like in the future. So if you can help us determine what you think the roadway should look like, that will greatly help us as we move forward with the project. I can't stress this enough, we need you to fill those comment sheets out because we do need your input and we want your input. The project team consists of the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet from District 9 and Stantec. We are the consulting firm that was hired to work with the Transportation Cabinet in designing this roadway. So everybody you see around the room with the name tags on tonight, we've either got a KYTC logo or a Stantec logo. I am an employee of Stantec, and we've been working with the Transportation Cabinet now for a little over a year on this project. To give you an idea of, of what we're looking at, it's basically everything from I-64 on the south end up to the Kentucky 180 intersection. That section is about 3.8 miles in length. Now, the phase of the project that we're in, you may hear us refer to it as preliminary design or phase one design. And what that is, is basically it determines what's the road going to look like, what are we going to design, what are we going to construct, where we answer a lot of the big picture types of questions. We don't get into a lot of details at this level, that's for the next level. But in order for us to move to the next level, we need to get a lot of the questions answered. And a lot of those questions, again, are in that questionnaire that we provided that we, again, want you to fill out, hopefully before you leave this evening. I am going to talk in a few minutes about the Kentucky 180 intersection because the project really is ad was advertised as going up to the 180 intersection, but we are looking at some improvements for the intersection as well that will affect both Kentucky 180 and US 60. If you look on the inside of your handout, and it's, this is the, the handout that's folded, it's got public meeting on the front. On the inside to the right, you see what we refer to as a draft project purpose and need statement. What that is, it basically makes the case for why we think this project is necessary and what issues the project needs to address. Basically, what I've got highlighted in red up here are the three major issues we're trying to address with the US 60 Lightning Project. It's to relieve congestion, to improve safety, and to provide better system connectivity. And what we mean by that is to just give you better access from I-64 to Ashland. So providing a better transportation corridor for access from the interstate to Ashland. If you want to look at the existing traffic volumes on this section of US-60, well right now they range from about 10,500 up to about 13,500 vehicles per day. The lower of those volumes is on the southwest end out near I-64. The highest volume is as you get closer to the Kentucky 180 intersection. So we get some traffic from Paul Coffee and from Route 5 going back towards Ashland. This is the reason why those volumes are a little bit higher. Now we don't just design around today's traffic. We try to make sure that every project that we build can accommodate traffic in the future. And that future we refer to as our design year. So that's what we're designing the project around is traffic that we anticipate in the year 2030. We've developed some preliminary traffic forecasts for the project that look at constructing either a three-lane alternative or a five-lane alternative. And there are some differences in those forecasts. We think if we build a three-lane alternative, it would carry somewhere between 14,400 vehicles per day up to a little over 15,000 vehicles per day. A five-lane alternative would carry a little more traffic than that. The low end would be about 17,400 up to almost 19,000 vehicles per day. The difference that we see between these two is the five-lane alternative looks like it will divert more traffic away from Kentucky 180. So the Kentucky 180 forecasts in the future would be lower if we built a five-lane versus building a three-lane. So that's really the difference we're talking about. 
I mentioned safety as being one of the issues we're trying to address with the project. And so if we look at the last three years of available information from the Kentucky State Police, and this would include all crashes that are reported on this section, we've had about 106 crashes reported. Uh, the predominant types of crashes we're talking about, we've had a lot of single vehicle crashes, but we've also had a lot of rear end and angle crashes. Those make up about 50%. Mm -hmm. So on the exhibits on display, you'll see some intersections or some driveways that we're proposing to close and to relocate to better locations. The reason we're relocating those is because they're at locations where you've got a bad skew angle where you don't have good sight distance in either direction or in one direction or the other along US 60. So we're relocating some of those to better locations along the corridor so that you would have better sight distance in both directions. Overall, this section has what we would refer to as a lower than average crash rate. So if we were to compare US 60 to other roadways across the state with similar traffic volumes and similar characteristics, it's generally overall lower than average. But there are a couple of segments that are higher. As we get closer to the I-64 interchange, there are some spots down there that have a higher than average crash rate. And as we get closer to the Kentucky 180 intersection, we've got a higher than average crash rate. So we are looking at trying to address the, the possible reasons for why those areas have a higher than average crash rate. So I've mentioned the questionnaire, and it was folded inside of the handout, and it's a double-sided form. We would like for you, if possible, to fill those out tonight, but if you can't, we do have envelopes provided where you can fill it out later and send it in to the transportation cabinet. On the front of the form, we've got some pretty general questions. You know, do you live along the corridor? Do you own property that might be affected? How often do you drive it? We like that kind of information because it kind of helps us wrap our heads around who's using it and what your opinions are based upon how you use it. But the back side has really got some more specific questions, and these are those types of questions that we really need answered before we can move forward. So these are basically the three that I'm going to talk about uh, that we would like for you to, in particular, pay attention to. First of all is we, we refer to a three-lane or five-lane section, and we refer to either an urban typical or a rural typical. So a three-lane section would basically be one lane in each direction, with a center turn lane. A five lane would be two lanes in each direction with a center turn lane. So that's what we mean by three or five lane. The difference between an urban typical and a rural typical is that an urban typical would have curb and gutter along the outsides. So instead of having shoulder, which is a rural section, it has curb and gutter. The reason we use the term rural or urban is because you would typically see an urban curb and gutter type of roadway within a city or within a more congested area. And you would typically see a shoulder built on a more rural section. So that's the reason we use those terms. So we're asking for your input on whether you would like to see three lanes or five lanes. And either of those will serve future traffic. Again, really the difference is the five lane will serve a little bit more traffic, but again, it's basically drawing some away from Kentucky 180. And then we're asking, would you like a curb and gutter, or would you like an outside shoulder? The real difference there is that if you build shoulder and you have vehicles break down, they have a paved shoulder to get off on, as opposed to a curb and gutter section where if they break down, they're going to have to break down in a lane or try to get to a driveway so they can get off the roadway. Just to give you an idea of what's on display here this evening, these are both five-lane alternatives. On this side of the room, we're showing the five-lane with curb and gutter. So it's basically this alternative right here. And on that side of the room, we're showing the five-lane rural. So that's basically this one right here, five lanes with shoulder. Okay, so just to give you an idea of what you're looking at. Now, if you answered that you like the curb and go, that urban option, we would also like to know, do you think we should do something with the project to accommodate bicyclists and pedestrians? The reason we only ask that specifically for the curb and gutter or urban option is because we would assume if you build shoulders that bicyclists could actually use the shoulders to ride on. But if we build a curb and gutter section, those shoulders aren't out there. And if you want to accommodate bikes or heads, 
there's several different ways that can be done, but what we're asking is would you like for a sidewalk to be built on one side of the roadway? And what we're showing is essentially either the north or the west side. So it'd be on the if you're going from the interstate up to 180, the left side of the roadway. Or would you like bike lanes on both sides? Bike lanes would be a five foot wide striped bike lane outside of the, of the travel lane to accommodate bicyclists. So again, if you if you check that you like curb and gutter, that's where this question really comes into play. Do you think first of all we, we should do anything? And secondly, if you think we should do something to accommodate bikes and beds, which of these do you prefer? Now, the project team has looked at a multitude of alternatives up to this point in the project. And what we're showing tonight is what we feel to be the most feasible options for future implementation. And so, what we're showing is basically broken into three segments. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why we've broken it into three segments. Segment one is essentially from I-64 up to the Route 5 intersection. Segment two is from Route 5 to just east of Joe Wells Drive, Joe Wells Road. And then segment three is from that point east on to Kentucky 180. Within segment one, the only real option to improve that section and widen it is to widen it to the west. Because on the east side of the roadway, we've got the railroad and we've got the stream. So we really can't do anything on the east side. All the widening would have to be to the west. In segment two, we are looking at some different options for how we go through those two curves as you're going through the Paul Coffey area. For most people, we could build either one of those and you wouldn't really notice the difference. The only people that are really going to notice the difference are those that live or own property in that vicinity. So there are some right-of-way differences there, but overall the roadway would look very similar, uh, depending on which alternative you build. We are showing both of those options. The magenta, or that pink colored lines on this alternative, shows one way to treat those two curves, and then the lighter blue color over here shows a different way to treat those curves. In segment three, though, we're asking a very specific question about that piece. We can either build a roadway that's widened to the north or widened to the south. The blue that you see on here that's on the back side of this handout the blue is widening to the north, the yellow is widening to the south. And we're also showing those in a little more detail on each of these exhibits. So the exhibit to the left over here is yellow, that's widening to the south. The exhibit to the right is blue, dark blue, that's widening to the north. The real difference is there, there's some right-of-way differences. If we widen to the north, you're taking a couple more houses to build that. If you're widening to the south, you're taking a couple more businesses to build that. We can build either one. And the project team has absolutely no preference at this point. We need your input on which one of those you think we should build. So I would encourage you to take a look at the, the drawings in more detail that we've got on the, on the sides of the room and look at the right of way that we are currently showing on there to build either of those so that you can let us know what you think about which of those should be built. The Kentucky 180 intersection is also included with the project. And this is a view looking due west from Hansburg Road. So you got the truck stop, the uh, the uh, Dairy Queen is over in this corner. As anybody that travels through the intersection on any regular basis knows, it's almost like a roller coaster because the lanes going southbound on, on US 60 to Kentucky 180 are not at the same elevation as the lanes going northbound. And so what that creates is basically a roller coaster effect as you try to go through the intersection. So we're going to try to improve that with the project. And this is a different view. We're looking northbound now. So we're on Kentucky 180. U.S. 60 is off to the west here, Hansburg Road is off to the east over there. What's there today again is a roller coaster. As you come in from 60, you basically go down to cross the lanes on southbound U.S. 60. You've got a flat spot in the median, and then you have to go down before you can go back up to Hansburg Road. What we're proposing to do is to flatten all of that. We can't make it perfectly flat because this intersection isn't a pretty big curve, but we can certainly reduce it quite a bit. So what we're proposing to do is essentially, again, to go from this to this. So we think this will be a drastic improvement as you go through on US 60 and per road. To give you an idea of the schedule for the project, we will wrap up this phase, the preliminary design phase, hopefully by the end of the summer. And again, your input is critical to help us move into the next phase, which would be the final design. Final design typically takes somewhere around a year to complete. We would expect to complete that somewhere 
in the latter part of 2013. We would actually start the right-of-way acquisition process at about that same period, sometime in the, the latter part of 2013, and wrap that up hopefully in the first part of 2014. After the right-of-way is acquired, we can actually go out and start relocating the utilities, so underground water, gas lines, any of the overhead power lines. We acquire the right-of-way, and then basically the utility companies will relocate all those lines outside of that right-of-way that we would need. After that's completed, we can actually go into the construction. With this being a nearly four-mile project, it's going to take about two years to build. So if we started in 2015, we would hopefully complete the project by 2016. That really concludes the presentation. What we're going to do from here, we're going to go back to open.